Hello to everyone. And thank you for uh, coming to the Luminar first ever press conference. Um, we have here Nils Melngailis, who is the Luminar Group uh, C Chairman of the Board. And we have Erki Rasuka, CEO of Luminar Group. And uh, before we get started, uh, we should go through some practicalities. So uh, first of all, the press conference will be in English. Uh, secondly, we will have it in two parts. In first part, uh, Erki and Nils will talk about uh, the closing of the transaction that happened today, and then about uh, Luminar strategic uh, choices and insights. Then we have the questions and answers part. Uh, we will also have the online streaming, so we will have lots of journalists and audience uh, watching from YouTube. And they have the possibility to have uh, questions and answers presented as well. So to those who are watching uh, from online, please uh, follow the link and uh, send in your questions in English. And after we are finished, you will have the chance to have interviews with Nils and Erki. So welcome again, and Nils Serki, it's your. So hello and welcome to Luminar Lebdien. Uh, last week and, and over the weekend, uh, our teams have invested a lot of time and effort in, in completing the transaction, and I'm very happy to say that today is our first day, first work day of, of Luminar. Um, you know, we have, um, again, over, over these last weeks and, and, and several months, we've now created one of the largest banking groups in the Baltics with total assets of approximately 15 billion euros, uh, 1.6 billion of capital, which represents 17% uh, core tier one capital adequacy. Uh, so we think this is a fantastic start uh, for, for a, a business, in, in, in a, a banking business in an industry which is uh, going under very substantial changes. Uh, in terms of the timeline, just to remind everyone, the uh, transaction itself was announced last August, so a little bit more than a year ago. Uh, both Nordea and DNB, looking at their business in the Baltic countries, understood that uh, given that the investments that need to be made and, and the, the challenges of the financial services industry, that this type of transaction makes a lot of sense. Um, I'd have to say that, you know, since Erki and I have been appointed, and the more we get into the details of the operations, uh, meet the people, and the, the very strong teams on both sides, uh, who've been working very closely together for the last six months in terms of planning uh, for the future of Luminor, I think we're more and more excited about what we see uh, than, than when we first joined, even. Um, you know, we, we've also rebranded the bank. I'll, I'll speak about that uh, in, in a few minutes. Um, and we've also, uh, through a process, a very transparent process, uh, selected, you know, both teams from uh, each bank, and, and also uh, we have some very strong managers who've joined us externally uh, to build a very strong team to take the business forward. Uh, and most importantly, in, in terms of the timing of this transaction, uh, last month we received the, uh, the blessing of the regulators, which of course is one of the, the key um, milestones we need to reach in order to uh, consummate the transaction. So uh, since we received this uh, permission, of course, the, the work is only intensified, and we're very happy to announce that we're open for business today. Um, and, and I think, you know, all, all of the... Uh, you know, the, the, the planning work is behind us. Now, now it's time to really get to work and, and uh, kick off Luminor as, as a new financial services provider um, with a very strong uh, foundation. Uh, we've also, as, as you all know, um, we've gone through a rebranding process. This is a process that we started uh, very soon after we joined. We worked with um, a, an international consultancy called Future Brands. Um, also had, had dialogues both with, with clients and with uh, staff teams to get really um, ensure that, that, that the brand that we're building is consistent with what we think the future holds for the financial services industry, what the clients uh, would like to see. 
and also that the culture and values of, of both uh, DNB and Nordea. Uh, so it's, it's, it's been a, a fairly uh, interactive process internally, and I, I think it's safe to say that the staff are more and more excited about what we can do, and, and hopefully uh, the clients and you all will feel the same very soon. Um, finally, from my side, you know, I'd like to discuss, uh, remind you a bit about the structure. I know we've announced this before, uh, but of course, the, uh, the shareholding structure of the holding company, which owns the three uh, fully regulated banks in each country as of today, uh, is owned 46% uh, by, um, sorry, 56% 50, by uh, Nordea and 44% and by, by um, uh, DNB. Uh, basically, you know, and, and we also have in, in, the, in the transaction, the, um, uh, we will have man management participating in, in, in this uh, shareholding structure. Uh, it's going to be part of a, a, a really long, long-term incentive program, not just for existing managers, uh, but also an increasing amount of uh, people from, from both banks. Um, and I think, as, as we announced earlier as well, this is the initial structure over the course of the next uh, 12 to 18 months. We will also go to a permanent um, structure where the holding company will be in Estonia, and uh, Latvia and Lithuania will be converted to branches. This is really a uh, technical legal step operationally. There is already a group management team under Artke's leadership. The governance of the holding company is also going to be replicated uh, over time in Estonia. And um, uh, in terms of customers and, and staff, there shouldn't be any difference in day-to-day -day operations. Um, you know, our, our, our current operating model uh, is already being fully implemented by Edke and his team. Um, so I'll hand over to Edke now. Thank you very much, Nils. And good morning, or good day. As Nils was saying, uh, uh, this transaction is uh, quite unprecedented. If we have seen over the last uh, 20 years or so uh, how the Baltic banking market or financial services market has been growing, mostly by uh, entering uh, uh, strong Nordic uh, uh, financial groups and then building their business here. So now we are first time where we're, we're seeing uh, uh, something which uh, this market has not witnessed earlier. Yes, some of the earlier comers also have reduced their uh, footstep and then have uh, uh, eventually decided to leave. But here we have a, a very different transaction whereby uh, two formerly competing uh, fairly large players are combining their business, businesses. Naturally, uh, also creating the Luminor means that uh, the old way of, uh, of working and uh, positioning ourselves and then targeting our work uh, needs to be changed. And uh, uh, with a few words, then I, I want to uh, talk about it, what this change means to us. When we are uh, positioning Luminor in the Baltic uh, financial services market, I want to bring out uh, uh, two, uh, uh, I think, important areas here. Firstly, uh, we recognize, again, as Nils uh, was saying, is that financial uh, services are going through the major transformation. <clears throat> and uh, uh, the formerly used uh, business models are changing or very much forced to be changed. We clearly recognize that as well, and we very much agree is that uh, banking uh, five years or seven or ten years from now is probably going to be look in a no number of ways quite different than what it is. And we at the Luminar, we have decided is that we want to be in the forefront of this change. So we're not going to hold, on, uh, hold back or hold on from our uh, uh, previous way of the working, but rather we recognize the importance of the uh, technology, what it plays in, in this transformation, and we want to take the courageous steps uh, forward and be uh, not the follower, but be one of them who is actually going to shape that uh, uh, financial industry development in the Baltics. And the second part uh, in our positioning, also very important part, is that uh, we are the only sizable player who is going to be exclusive, uh, ex uh, explicitly in the Baltics or for the Baltics. 
Uh, the other bigger players are part of the larger Nordic financial groups, and then there are a number of uh, very good um, uh, local players, but who are significantly smaller by their scale, and they do not cover these three markets. It is well known that Estonian, Latvian, and Lithuanian banking markets are very similar, and uh, overall the customer behavior and customer expectations are also very similar. So, therefore, uh, uh, while seeking for the scale and then for the size, yes, the Baltic banking market can be seen uh, as, a, as a one market. So we think now is that by creating the luminaries that we are very well positioned uh, to take uh, benefit of that. And at the same time, we also say is that our focus will be only into the Baltics uh, uh, as we get going and not outside of that. Nils was also mentioning or showing in his slide is that we have uh, 1.3 million customers, good customers. Uh, but also Luminor needs to uh, create its own focus. So we are not going to be everything for everybody. Uh, although is that we are going to keep serving all of these good customers who are currently with us. But we want to create our uh, more crisp uh, focus going forward. And... Uh, uh, Based on that positioning, what I was just also uh, uh, describing, uh, we are going to uh, build our own offerings and services, keeping in mind uh, local companies, particularly the companies whose decision making is inside of the Baltics, and then financially active uh, uh, and entrepreneurial people. Uh, together with the technology and to, to, together with uh, brave investments, we hope to create the uh, products and services which will be saving the time and attention uh, for these people, uh, for these entrepreneurial people, and then all of us together, we can grow our economy, economy of the three Baltic countries, and uh, uh, build a better uh, future. Luminor is going to be a pan-Baltic organization. Yes, our customer-facing uh, organization is going to be very local. We want it to be local. So Luminor in Latvia is going to be very Latvian, uh, in Lithuania very Lithuanian, and the same in Estonia. Uh, but we, uh, uh, as an organization itself, is that other than this customer-facing uh, 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 parts of our organization, we do pretty much everything uh, uh, across the Baltics. And that also means is that we are a multicultural organization, our executive team of 15 people is actually consisting seven different nationalities. Uh, not very common for the, for the Baltics, but we take that diversity very much as a, as a strength. And now the question is, is that, I mean, as diverse organization as, as it is, is that, I mean, how are you actually going to work together as a team? And we have came up with uh, values and uh, with behaviors which should be helping to guide us to work together as a one team. And I also want to briefly touch them. So first, so we have defined the three values for Luminor. The first of that uh, of them is curiosity, which we think is a is an interest of uh, to the external life. Uh, curiosity is always the start of the growth and then develop it, uh, development. That is something which uh, is pushing uh, uh, people and organizations further. We see that this fitting back with our high ambitions in, uh, in growing uh, uh, our products and offerings and, and also using uh, uh, modern technology for that. Secondly, collaboration. This is something that both of the, our legacy organizations are very good at already. So we have uh, measured that and we see is that our teams are, are very skillful in, a, in terms of, of working as a teams. Now we need to glue these teams together over the time and, uh, and even further uh, build this capability. And uh, thirdly, focus. I already mentioned this Luminor is not going to be everything for everyone. Uh, we will engage into the businesses where we think that we can provide and then build a real value to our, our customers and then to the society. And there will be some other areas where we possibly have uh, or where we have been engaged uh, previously, but where we are not really that good or, or where there, is, uh, uh, there are better players basically to take that space. And then we would step back from that. So looking to forward to the Luminor going forward, I think it's going to be probably more simple, but clearly more focused organization. And let me then wrap up my part here uh, with uh, what is on our, uh, our table over the coming uh, three months, uh, one year and then three years. 
So first of all, of course, the major, major goal, what has been there for the, for the last more than a year, like uh, Nils was also uh, talking about it, is, is actually go live. And this happened uh, at uh, uh, early morning hours of, uh, of Sunday, when uh, legally Luminor was created. And then during the next 24, 30 hours now, the many steps have been taken and, and we took the important decision last night is that the Luminar is ready to open all, its, uh, all of its channels and also branches to the, uh, to the customers and operate as business as usual. And this is very much what we do as we speak. Uh, then we, uh, uh, yes, we have became now as a, as a one organization, not yet as a one team, and it will be a learning exercise to, uh, to start to work together. And we absolutely going to have a highest focus now over the coming uh, few months to, to stability of the customer service is that, uh, that the creation of the Luminor is not going to be, uh, going to be remembered or seen as a, as, a, uh, as a difficulties with customer service. We do not take too much new things onto our table because exactly for these reasons, uh, while preparing for the merger, we have had a, a big restrictions of not sharing the information and not basically, uh, for all right reasons, not being able to talk about our customers and, and, and common customer strategy, etc. So this is all now starting to, uh, to happen um, as we speak. Over the first one year, we expect that uh, we're going to be uh, working as a truly one team based on the one set of the values. Uh, by that time, uh, b behind the Luminor store, there are not going to be any more uh, two doors, one to the former DNB and then one, uh, one to, the, to the Nordea platform. There is going to be one unified customer offering. Uh, we do foresee that already within this first year, or actually uh, uh, between the six and 12 months of the first year, that we will be there in the market also with, uh, with the brave new offerings in, uh, in our digital arena. And uh, we will not hesitate also to invest into the, into the future is because this uh, transformation and then the uh, uh, new business model cannot be built uh, without investing first. And if we look forward then to the uh, three years ahead of us is that by, uh, by the end of the three years, we hope to be uh, the one what I was describing by our positioning is as uh, a bank of the, of the next generation or truly cont contemporary financial service provider with fully digital offering. By that time, all of our restructuring is, uh, is completed, so we don't have anything uh, left to, to take care of there. Uh, we will be, rather than kind of uh, slightly inwardly and, uh, uh, and, uh, and only focusing on our current uh, uh, customers, then it will be the time where we will be seeking for the further growth uh, in terms of the uh, uh, new customer acquisitions, but also any other business combination which would make sense. And uh, what we have uh, also uh, put as a long-term target for ourselves is, uh, is eventually uh, Luminar should be in the shape and, uh, and, and we have a, a direction that it should be become a stock-listed company in the Baltics. Uh, let me end uh, here. Uh, that is the uh, brief intro and uh, back to Hedwig. Back to uh, questions and answers and thank you Nils and Erki for that uh, introduction. Uh, we have uh, microphone ready, so uh, when you want to ask uh, questions, please state your name and uh, who you represent. And uh, after the audience questions, we will go to online questions. Hello, my name is... Is this working? Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, I, my name is Iva Burkevich. I work for news agency Leta. I wanted to, to ask, could you shed some light on when the rebranding process will be finished? in regards to ATMs, in regards to the customer uh, service centers. And also, as far as I understand, Nordea and DNB uh, right now has two different types of ATMs. So uh, what do you plan to do about that? Do you, do you want to get uh, started? I could start, yeah. I think, um, well, first of all, on, on the brand, uh, y you know, we've uh, uh, it, it's been an extensive planning process. I think you know the uh, we've done as much as we could uh, in recent weeks, given that you know we we really did have to wait for the uh, regulatory approvals to come through before we start uh, pushing ahead with making physical changes, of course, um, to, to to the to the bank's infrastructure. Uh, my understanding is that uh, a great deal of this work will be done in the next hundred days. Um, yes. I could maybe hand over to Erki, who's who's a bit more involved in the operations. 
Yes, exactly. I mean, the work will uh, carry on with, uh, with a high speed. All in all, we have agreement with our parent organizations uh, to uh, selectively still uh, use, uh, not for our business advancement, but still to use for all practical reasons, their uh, trademarks uh, up to the six months and no longer. So that is basically the backstop is that everything needs to be completed uh, uh, within the six months. But as Nils was saying, is that, uh, that very much or, or many activities are, are basically kicked off the, uh, right now. What comes then to the ATMs network is that I mean, we, do, uh, we do have uh, ATM networks in, in all three countries and their arrangements are slightly different. We are in a different uh, partnership uh, arrangements and, uh, and just the creation of the Luminor now actually just now allows us to, to open up these discussions with other market players and, uh, and seek the, the, the way forward here. So we don't have yet the, the crisp and, and, uh, and ready step-by-step -step, uh, uh, execution plan. Uh, but uh, one should expect uh, uh, kind of clear harmonization also in, in that area. Thank you, Eti. Anyone? Aaron Aguitas, Bloomberg News. Um, could you tell us how the bank uh, will be funded? Will you get any funding from the shareholders, or do you expect to sell bonds? And also, when you mentioned that the bank will be listed after the three-year plan, would that be a listing in the Baltics? Would the IPO be on one of the Baltic exchanges, or also outside the Baltic states. Thank you. Do you want to take listing and I take the phone? I'll start, yeah. I think, so, obviously, like any, uh, like any company, any financial institution, we're going to look to uh, optimize our capital structure as much as possible. And, um, you know, through our operational plan and, and client service, uh, ensure a profitable business, which will, you know, enable us to go to the markets, both for, for funding and eventually for equity and other financial instruments, um, you know, so uh, we are, I, I think, from a governance and, and a management perspective, you know, we're putting all of the building blocks in place to enable us to make the move to go to go public with equity or, or to go to the financial markets in other ways um, as we design our governance, you know, so we are, we are doing this with this in mind. Um, that, that's why we have to have very substantial governance at the board level. We have to have this all agreed uh, with the ECB, which will be uh, more and more involved in, in regulating Luminor as, as a large uh, systemic bank in, in, the, in the Eurozone. Um, exactly when the timing of that will be will depend on, you know, our success uh, in terms of operations and also market, to market conditions at any given time. Um, I could maybe hand over to Erki to comment a bit further on the funding. Yeah, exactly. Uh, Luminar is going to have a quite substantial uh, full sale funding. Uh, we, uh, it's, uh, it's, the amount is bigger than 4 billion euros. So if we have uh, all in all uh, customer deposits of uh, 9 billion, our full sale funding uh, will be more than uh, 4 billion euros. It is provi provided half and half by the parent organizations, being it both short and long term financing. It's, uh, it is provided at uh, attractive uh, terms, and, uh, and there is not uh, necessarily uh, the end date for that, as, uh, as agreements do foresee, is that uh, the funding, when it's starting to mature, can be uh, rolled uh, forward. But as a part of the uh, changes which have happened in, in financial industry post-financial crisis, also, we see is that uh, the previously widely used uh, business model whereby there is a, a cross-border uh, large amount full sale funding is used basically to build the local uh, uh, credit portfolios. That one doesn't really work anymore because it's, it's very capital extensive and, uh, and it's, uh, it's just not, uh, uh, I mean, it has lost a lot of its economics. So why I'm saying that is that uh, it's one of our internal targets is over the time to replace the FURSE funding with the local deposits. Uh, obviously, you know, making all of that big shift is, uh, is, is taking time and taking probably a number of the years. But when we talk here uh, one year, three year or five, five years from now, is that one should expect this full cell funding uh, to be uh, uh, shrinking all of the time. Thank you, Eti. Any more questions? Uh, what will be price level for, uh, for uh, customers? Uh, more like uh, uh, Nordia Bank or more like uh, in uh, DNB? Thank you. We, that's, a very, <laughs> that's a very good question. Uh, we, uh, what we see, and, and not so much that it was a plan, but I think this has been a uh, uh, kind of uh, 
maybe uh, logical development is that we see is that the Luminar is uh, mostly built onto the former stre uh, strengths of the corporate banking of Nordea. And, uh, and, uh, and we see is that in the, in the Luminar is that there are uh, basically uh, on, a, on a household banking or a private individualist banking is that that's kind of much more uh, led by, uh, by former DNB people. So maybe that is, uh, it's not very precise uh, 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 answer to a question, but it's, uh, uh, I mean, we have tried to combine obviously the strength from the both organizations, but we see is that yes, is that our, I think our corporate face is, uh, is going to uh, probably have a strong feel and touch from the Nordea and our private individuals business is going to have a strong feel and touch of the DNB. Thank you. More questions or we go to online? So we have some questions from uh, online as well. And uh, the question is, uh, are shareholders keen to finance Luminor's capital in the future if needed? Do you have ability to get subordinate loans, other liquidity sources? Um, I think that the short answer, as far as I know, is yes. Um, you know, we, we've discussed, uh, you know, the management team has presented an initial strategy to the board. Um, just one one point on the um, the structure again, which which I failed to mention earlier. Um, you know, even though there is a slight difference between uh, Nordea and DNB in terms of economic interest in the holding company, the the voting rights are are fifty fifty. So we've been, um, and, and our board reflects that, and you know we review the the strategy and the proposals uh, from management, which of, of course up until now have entailed decisions around branding, about, um, integration decisions, which had to be taken over time. Uh, you know, there will be proposals from management, uh, to, to make investments in certain areas. I think certainly, uh, one area I can say already that we've, uh, pre-agreed is, is substantial investments in technology. Um, you know, we still have to work out um, the, the extent of that, but um, but obviously, as um, you know, as, as the, the shareholders are committed uh, to, to Luminor and, and its success, and um, you know, will contribute. And, and as we spoke earlier, you know, will ins will ensure the funding in the, you know in the foreseeable future. And as long as uh, we have ideas that make sense and, and bring a, a return to the business, I'm, I'm sure those will be supported as well. Yeah, maybe just to add is that uh, maybe there hasn't been a very good uh, uh, availability of the clear data or so, but I mean, we are, we are combining two organizations, which currently on the running basis, if we just add it together, are making up a annual profit around 100 million euros per annum. So this is a, that's a big, uh, big pool of, uh, of profit uh, to, be, uh, to be earned. That is uh, happening basically as we, as we speak. And uh, so therefore also is that we feel is that, uh, that we, have, uh, uh, we do have a strong cash flow to also finance uh, the needed investments going forward. Thank you. And I think if no more questions, then we can go to interview part. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much.